In this video, I'm going to be going over my steps to doing my pool opening. You can see that I do put a tarp on this thing in the winter, and obviously it's covered in leaves and filled with water from the snow melt. And then I do have this little half horsepower pump that I use to clear off all the dirty old water that's sitting on top of the tarp. And then I pick up the leaves with a net. So I didn't really record getting the water off there, but suffice it to say, I got the water off. I pulled off the water bags and I pulled the tarp off the pool and that's pretty much what it looks like and I do have the pool slowly filling up with water from uh, draining it in the winter. Now I'm going to go over to the skimmer and pull out all the styrofoam bits. The skimmer smells very bad. It smells like 50 dead worms that are sitting in water. So these little pieces of styrofoam prevent the skimmer from cracking. Basically as the water expands as it freezes, it'll crush down the styrofoam instead of pushing outward and breaking the plastic pieces. So now I'm going to grab a adjustable wrench and remove the plug from the skimmer. And like I said, this water is disgusting. I actually have to go for a shower before going for lunch because my arm smells so bad after this. Anyway, there's the plug. There's two plugs down there, but only one plug is connected to anything. And in this pool, there are two outlet jets, and both of them have plugs inserted into them as well from the winterization process. So there's one of them, and obviously I'm using the adjustable wrench to get them going. And you can see the pool slowly filling up while I do this, so I'm on a bit of a time crunch. And there's the other return jet for the pool. Now when I winterize things, I did put antifreeze in the line, so I need to get all of that out and I just loosely put everything back together before closing it all down for the winter so you can see everything sort of comes apart really easy and I'm not going to circulate any of the water back into the pool before I blow the lines out and get all of the antifreeze out of the lines because I just don't want that in my pool and that's the stuff I use that summer smiles ice away so to blow the lines out I'm using my shop vac in reverse and this is where I get soaked in that worm water and I get inspired to go for a shower. So basically I just take the shop vac and jam it into the skimmer line and later into the return lines as well. Like I said, I disconnected everything so it could just blow out freely. But, and you can see the antifreeze is on the ground and the water's flying out through that pipe as well. So that's the skimmer line kind of getting blown out. I just leave it sitting there for a while with the vacuum running and then I take some fresh water and fill up the skimmer line with fresh water and then once the skimmer line is filled with the water I just jam the shop vac hose in there again and once again it's on the blow mode as opposed to suction mode so it's just pushing the water through the pipe and cleaning it out and that'll make sure none of the antifreeze gets pushed into the filter or gets kicked back out to the pool. And once the skimmer's done, I do the exact same thing to the two return lines. While well, I have the vacuum connected, I actually did have to go back and put a plug into the return line that doesn't have the vacuum connected to it because obviously the air from the vacuum was going out that line. So I do both of the return lines in the same manner so I don't record it twice. And then the last thing I do with the shop vac is actually put it onto suction mode and I pull water from the bottom of the pool. So I did put some of the antifreeze in the drain line. So that's the one that connects to the bottom of the pool. So I did have to pull that out because if you push it back in, obviously it'll go into the pool. I did go get some new return jet fittings and some Hayward O-ring lubricant. There is a special tool for these jets, but I just put them in by hand and I, I really don't have any issue with that. I'll probably go get the special tool when I go to take them out because it'll probably be too tight. And I do put Teflon tape on all the threads when I do this. So, so I just put the return jet or return outlet in by hand. And then I put in the directional jet nozzle and the little fitting that holds the jet nozzle in place. And point the jet nozzle down so it's pointing into the pool. Now, when I winterize the pump, 
I put all of the accessory items into the pump basket and they are still there. So there's the old return jets. You can see they're pretty bad. So that's why I got new ones. I think the previous owner must have filled them up with silicone or something. And the pump has two plugs and the filter has one plug. It turns out the pump has two different size plugs. So I'll put in the first plug first and the second plug second. And for both of these, I just go hand tight and I put some Teflon tape on each of them. And I may have even put the Teflon tape on backwards, who knows. I didn't have a problem with them. And then I put the plug onto the sand filter as well. When putting the couplings back together, each of these ones has a rubber o-ring. So that's where I use some of the Hayward rubber o-ring lubricant. And I do that to all three of them. So there's the two suction lines and then there's the one return line that's coming out of the sand filter, which is that one right there. And I'm going to take this lid inside and clean it up with some soap and water. In addition to getting the pump running and everything, I'm also putting the ladder back in and a few other things. And before I put the ladder back in, there's still some green stuff on there from the pool from last year. So once again, I'm just taking Dawn soap and a J cloth and cleaning it up before I put it back in the water. And there's just one bolt on each side. You just tighten that down and it tightens the ladder and holds it in place. So pretty simple process. So the pool's still looking bad because I haven't been able to run the pump and clean it. But now is the time. I've run the water long enough that it's higher than the skimmer and higher than the return jets as well. So I'll take some water over to the pump so that I can prime the pump with the water and I'll get this thing going. And once again, I use some of the Hayward's gasket and O-ring lubricant on the pump cover. And I'm going to move the sand filter from winterize to the bypass mode. So it's just going to spray water out onto my lawn. And I got really lucky. I had no problems getting the pump running. It is a self priming pump, but I find that filling it up with water first definitely helps it get, uh, definitely helps it get started the first time I use it in the year. So I'll turn the pump on. And just like that, water is bypassing straight out and onto my lawn. And now I'll turn the pump on one more time with the sand filter in backwash mode. So now I'm cleaning the sand and backwashing the sand filter. Then I'll turn it off one more time and put it onto rinse mode. So I will now rinse the sand that's in the filter. And after doing that, I'll turn it on to normal operation mode and get the pump filtering the water that's in the pool. To make getting the chemicals sorted out a little easier, I got this Pool Protect pool opening kit and it comes with OxyPro sanitizer, Algae Kill 600, and a stain prevent chemical as well. My pool is about 40,000 liters. And I'm just going to dump the full bottle of each of these into the pool just to make the math easier. Obviously, if you have a much bigger pool, maybe you need more. If you have a smaller pool, maybe you need less. The first chemical it's telling me to put in is this stain prevent chemical. And once that's in, it tells you to let it sit for about six hours. I probably end up letting it sit for 12 hours with just the pump running. So after 12 hours, this is probably about the end of the day now. I just take the Algae Kill 600 and dump the entire bottle of that in as well. And this one tells you to let it sit even longer. I think I let it sit for 24 to 36 hours. And then I put in the final chemical in the same manner. And that's what I'm left with. In the meantime, I did use the vacuum and sucked up all the dirt that was on the bottom of the pool and there's still some stuff floating around in there. But it is looking a lot better. And then I took a sample of the water to a pool store and got the analysis done. 
And basically they got a system that'll tell you how much of each chemical you need. So they're recommending two kilograms of alkalinity plus and a couple cups of chlorine. So pretty simple. I do about 50% of what they're recommending. And then I come back and do another 50% after letting it sit for about a day. So I throw in one kilogram of this alkalinity plus and I throw in about two cups. I don't have the chlorine they recommended. I just have regular chlorine, but it's all the same stuff. So I come in, throw in two cups of chlorine, and that pretty much gets me to the right level. Normally I mix my granulated chlorine with water before I throw it in. However, since I'm vacuuming the pool every three or four hours now, just because I find the first couple days I open it, there's a lot of stuff that sinks to the bottom. I'm gonna vacuum up that chlorine anyway, so it's not gonna sit on the bottom, it's not that big of a deal. And I do put in those two cups. After that, the pool's pretty much good to go. Obviously, I have to vacuum it a few more times, and I gotta skim some more crap off the top because there's a lot of leaves blowing around the yard and stuff like that. But it's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Overall, the process is a little bit time consuming. I think it takes about a weekend to do a decent job of it, but in that time, it's a lot of waiting around, it's a lot of letting the chemicals sit, that kind of thing. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.